So, uh, welcome everyone again back to the R2 cast. Uh, this is the second edition, and uh, today we have uh, David Leggett. So, if you want to say hi there, David. Hi, folks. Um, David is, uh, is the chairman of the RSABI, which we'll get into later. I'm just going to quickly tell you a few things uh, about the podcast, how you can find it, uh, and so on. Um, we'll be sharing this on YouTube. It also goes live on Spotify, Breaker, Radio Public. Google Podcasts and Pocket Casts, just so you're aware if, if you use YouTube here and there, but you'd rather listen on, on the walk on Spotify or something like that. That's all about me and all about the podcast, though. Um, we'll get into talking to David. Uh, so, yeah, Chairman of RSABI. What we'll do, David, is we'll get into RSABI um, and we'll probably talk mainly about that for the, the, the duration of the podcast. But first off, who who is David Leggett? What, what's your background and, and that sort of thing? Um. Well, well. Firstly, thank you very much for asking me on, and thank you. Uh, it's really good to hear uh, about someone who's down at the bar- barony, because I started my life. I was born very close to the barony uh, in Dumfries, and spent the first um, uh, uh, sort of seventeen about years of my life down in Dum- Dumfriesshire, where my father had a small farm, and uh, I um, went to school at uh, Wallace Hall uh, Academy, which is at, at Closebourne in those days. And um, uh, this will be of interest to you with your educational um, element. Uh, there's, I actually did higher agriculture at school and um, I really enjoyed that. And uh, it's helped me a lot in my uh, career um, of auctioneering and valuing and things like that. And um, it was a very good uh, tutor. It was a chap called Den Locke. And he was uh, a great guy, and I found him very inspirational. And uh, so the result was I did that course. I don't even know if they, they do hire um, agriculture or, uh, nowadays, but uh, anyway, that was the subject, and I uh, managed to pass that. And it's helped me a lot um, and uh, over the years. And uh, he, he, he was very good at that, but he was a total failure in teaching me how to play cricket. Uh, he was a big, great k- cricket player, and he did try to very hard to get me to play cricket, but he said I spent more time looking over the dike at the cattle and the sheep than I did there for the for balls. I, w- I had two sessions and I was sacked from that. Um, so I spent uh, a very happy time on the farm. And uh, when I was young, we had a small dairy herd and then it went on to beef. And uh, then uh, um, one of my big, uh, one of the best moves ever made was going to Young Farmers and that was at Thornhill Young Farmers. And uh, I had a, a bit of a year and a half with them uh, just before I moved uh, into my career. And uh, it was fantastic. We met a lot of great people and it got me into the Young Farmers Movement. And I think it's the one movement that's been um, a big influence in my um, uh, life. Um, and uh, we started speech making, and stock judging and uh, all the things that you get up to at the Young Farmers. So it was great. And of course, we met a lot of people. You know, so. So uh, we then, uh, I just came to career choice and um, I was hovering really between, I was quite keen on veterinary work, uh, I was also keen on surveying, you know, land surveying and auctioneering. And uh, just after I completed my exams, I applied, there was a job came up at Perth as the office boy. Uh, um, so I applied for this job and uh, I got it as an office boy, as a trainee auctioneer. And uh, it really is incredible to think of what uh, that entailed because for, first I was moving away from home, staying in town, going to a job. It was a complete uh, set of new uh, situations. And um, that was that. And I went to the, into the office for the interview. And I mean, the, near the best description of the office in 1975 was Dickensian. Uh, because there's no computer, uh, uh, all the work and um, paperwork was done manually. And that I will never forget in the first day of seeing the ledgers, um, which were written by hand, firstly in pencil and then very carefully inked in by the most amazing clerks and uh, accountants and things who could uh, add these great columns of figures. It was, it was really impressive. And the other thing I remember, clearly, is the smoke in the office, because everybody in those days smoked. Uh, of course. for it now. And so my first, I got the job, and um, 
the first job, I, I remember I, I was getting paid two pounds a week less than my dig money. Um, so that was uh, not a very good start commercially, but it was soon sorted. And uh, then uh, my first job in the morning was to go and get 120 cigarettes for the three directors. Um, and, uh, and it was a funny day when I wasn't sent to get more cigarettes. Um, so, so that was that. So I did all the things like licking stamps or dressing envelopes. And, and uh, I, I didn't particularly like the intense office work to start with, but um, I suppose I realised it was a means to, to an end. And uh, uh, I then started to work in the yard and do all the things that young trainee auctioneers do. And then I um, started selling about a year after I went to Perth. So that was a momentous thing, quite a terrifying experience to sell for the first time. And uh, I did that at Granton and Spay Market, where United Auctions had a, a, a yard. And um, they, it was, as I say, it was a great start um, a year after in, I got into the market doing business to be selling and I sold a, a bit that year and then farm sales and all the things that young auctioneers sold. Those days were calves and pigs and all that sort of thing uh, where there's, there's not quite as much of that. So that was really the start and I then um, went to, um, I was very lucky to uh, be in Perth because there's such a variety and the company had a great history and of course um, as well as all the commercial sales, had the, the, the world famous sales of Aberdeen Angus and, and um, uh, Shorthorn and other pedigree cattle. And I, I've, I've always been interested in stock of any kind. You know, people say, well, what's your favourite? I said, well, I don't really have a favourite. My favourite's the one I'm selling at the time, usually. And um, it's, uh, and it's um, so it, it's been great. So you've got one good exposure to all, all that. And, and a huge commercial um, trade that went on and, in those days. So it was, it was fascinating. And um, the other thing I did, I was, was very involved with Perth Young Farmers and we did quite a lot of speech making. And I was beamed into the chair of that quite early. Someday it resigned in the, 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 the chain of command. And I was chairman of Perth Young Farmers. And uh, through that, gosh, was, you met so many great people and we still I still keep up with a lot of them now. So the, the, the young farmers, actually, it just shows you, if there's anyone out there thinking about, you know, going into auctioneering, one of the best things I ever did was, well, I didn't say I volunteered. I think I was nominated or frog marched into speech making uh, class, was, uh, you know, and uh, that was good. And, and it, that really did help me with my selling, um, especially the early stages of it. So I, to start with, I concentrated on sheep and then there was a vacancy in the cattle side and I went over into the cattle side of the company and uh, then I went on and just, you know, gradually worked away. I eventually got selling at the bull sales, which uh, was something that I'd always wanted to do. And um, then um, as uh, people retired and more space became available, I, I, I became a director. And then I became uh, the managing director of that part of um, uh, United Auctions, which was the Eastern sort of division, as they called it in those days. And uh, so that was exciting. So you ended up, because you became a, became a director, you ended up doing a more um, uh, office and management based things. But I still yeah. kept selling, which I, I really, really enjoyed. And I think what was um, Fantastic it was the teamwork within the uh, United Auctions. And by that stage, um, the Sterling and Perth had it all amalgamated. And uh, so we, you know, you could be, you know, layer one day, Oban the next day, um, uh, Sterling the next day, and, and so on. So you, you saw, you know, I, I, was, I was lucky that hardly any two days were ever the same, you know. And uh, we then um, went, uh, you know, Fast forward um, in 1991, uh, 1990, um, I was appointed the um, MD at Perth. And uh, then we had a change in the company in that um, the company was a private, a limited company at that point. And we went on to the stock market and we became uh, onto the AIM market, the alternative investment market. So that uh, meant that uh, our company, our shares were traded on the stock market and um, the company was property rich and 
It was probably rich because in the old days, um, the, the directors of the of United Auctions bought land around the, the, the town to layerage stock. I mean, this is going back into the 80, late 1800s, 1900s. Uh, to yep. layerage stock, which had been walked in through, uh, you know, from, from literally the old drove road system and the railways and things. And so they had, we had quite a lot of land around and that made, we became a target for property developers. And indeed a company bought us, um, bought us out, we had a sale, uh, we, we sold the firm out to this company who agreed to build a market at, um, at Stirling, amalgamating the Perth and Stirling markets. So there was a lot of changes and, and uh, you know, so I've seen the company going from, you know, to change you know, a lot. Um, and uh, this company, the company that bought us out, development company, offered myself and two colleagues, both of whom had started like myself, that was Neil uh, McLean and Robin Tuch. They, they offered us the chance of um, uh, a management buyout. And uh, so um, that was a big step, and uh, I'm really glad that we took it. It was an important step in our lives and in the company's lives. So we kept that, that was about 15 uh, um, years ago, and we uh, worked on that for uh, 10 or 11 years, and then we sold out to the next management team. So it's really great to see them taking the company forward. Um, and uh, they're a great team and they're uh, a very uh, um, brilliant team of auctioneers and field staff, yard staff and administrators and they do a great job. So um, that's really the sort of my career with uh, United Auctions. Um, I retired four years ago and I'm still a consultant and uh, having watched uh, farmers all my uh, life and having come from a farm, I decided my retirement along with my uh, very long suffering wife uh, to buy a farm. So uh, we have got some cows and some sheep of our own and uh, we um, uh, were enjoying that. And we've just recently built a house on the farm. So that's been something we hadn't done before either. So there has been quite a lot of changes in our life in the last uh, n- number of years. Well, it seems that way, and, and from from someone uh, hired to buy cigarettes for the folk in the office to, to MD is quite the quite the movement. So uh, yeah, very interesting stuff, David. And, and uh, it's it's being on your own farm is quite quite different from being involved in farms. You know, I mean, I don't own the farm here; it's my parents that do. But just that sort of connection to your own animals and your own stocks quite quite a a different way forward, if you know what I mean. And you say. Your long-suffering wife was was she involved in the option of getting the, the animals, or was uh, it? Yeah, was that really... <laughs> well, we had to. I had the very difficult decision of to make of what sort of animals did we get, um, because uh, as I say, I, I, I'm you know I've been very privileged to be involved in these amazing bull sales and, and breeding sales, and so when it came to cattle, I mean, I we 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 had thought long and hard, but given that we're Although I've been involved in the market for all these years, um, since 70, 1975, uh, um, I, I hadn't really been practically involved with the cattle and sheep and dozing and, and all the things. And, and it really does remind me of the skill set um, that uh, I, I think people not involved in the industry I'm not a real clue as the skill set that's involved. Even with running a small, we were 18 pedigree beef shot horn cows. And the time you uh, uh, fill in forms, replace ear tags, take a note of everything that they get in terms of, you know, for one yesterday had new forest disease, so we had to catch it and jag it. And, and uh, But all these um, skill sets that uh, farmers have, it, it is fantastic. And it's a great thing, I mean, it just reminds me of the the, the, the the amazing industry it is and how much people well you see that what you're doing yourself Wallace but how much are things people have got to know you know about machinery about spraying and uh, I'm not Vela doesn't let me near the machines really she's got a JCB <laughs> and um, she is which I, I I mean it's a very powerful thing and we used it a lot for her when the house is being built and other things. She is entirely in charge of, of, of that, and I'm restricted to a gator, um, <laughs> uh, which is which is absolutely fine for me. I, I just like that. I, I don't want the responsibility of the JCB. But uh, all the things that and she went on a spraying course. I mean, 
it took three days and uh, you know the, the, I just got a qualification uh, for that but it's incredible what a farmer has got to know uh, you know to, to, to run his business and, and the skills they've got and I mean I knew a fair bit of uh, that but it, having a farm of your own certainly reinforces that yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, it's, it's, there's a lot to be known in the farm, that's for sure. It's quite interesting. You said you did uh, higher agriculture, um, and you you said you weren't sure if that was still a thing. I, as far as I'm aware, it's not. Um, mm-hmm. I think it would be brilliant to move that sort of uh, thing into the curriculum, and not just agriculture, construction, anything like that. That uh, you know, I think schools put a lot of pressure on a certain eighty subjects, and if you're not good at them, you're going nowhere. Um, and I like the idea of promoting industries like agriculture, construction, joinery, trades and whatnot. Um, mm, so I think yes. it would be brilliant. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, interesting stuff. Really interesting. Um, what was the next thing I was going to ask? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the young farmers thing, I, you've you've promoted that there, David, and I couldn't agree more. Um, I was never really in a young farmers where I went and joined one. Uh, myself, along with three or four others on the island, actually started one on Aaron. Yeah. And, uh, we maybe had about twelve members at most, and and the 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 things I gained from that was excellent. You know, the social mm-hmm. skills, the the networks, the whatever, all that sort yes. of thing was fantastic. Mm-hmm. But I think you know, um, you you've been newly appointed as chairman of RSABI. Was it was it in December or was it January, David? It was, it was uh, end of November. Yeah, but it's officially beginning of December. Yeah, sure. so December. So sorry, six or seven weeks in, um, yeah. you'll be you'll be getting quite acquainted with the job now. And I just wanted to that I saw a post on the RSABI Facebook page that you'd been appointed, and I thought that would be a really interesting chat. We're in what is now the third lockdown. We're all we're all pretty sick of the sight of the same four walls, and uh, mental health's been a pretty big problem for yeah. sure. And and when you look at the agricultural industry in, in particular, it's a very uh, lonesome industry at times. You're working on your own, be that in a tractor, on a hill, that sort of thing. And RACBI offer a lot of emotional support, practical support, financial support. And I think that's excellent in an industry like ours, which sort of has that bravado tied to it and, and talking about mental health can sometimes be sort of demeaning to folk, which should never be the case. So. Um, yeah, give me a little bit about RSABI. What is it? What what drew you to it? That sort of thing. Well, it's been um, I've been a trustee for just uh, between six and seven years, um, Wallace, and it was all um, it was basically through my involvement with the United Auctions. We did a bit of quite a bit of fundraising, and uh, we had a lot of contact with the office, uh, the RSABI office, and I was asked if I'd like to become a trustee and uh, so I was delighted to, to, you know, to be involved. Just recognising the good job they, 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 they do and um, it's ch- it's changed, um, the organisation's changed quite a bit of late because when I started with uh, seven years ago it was mainly helping um, people uh, augmenting pensions where you know retired uh, folk that were either farmers or, or, or farm workers um, uh, had, uh, you know, issues, you know, financially, uh, maybe a lot losing a tied house or something like that, and a pension not covering and uh, rents and things. So there was a lot of that, and we still do, you know, quite a bit of that. But what we changed about three to four years ago, fundamentally, is what we're doing, and it's actually addressing a much younger. Uh, element and that is uh, our, our, our view of the future where we can help uh, folk in all sorts of really difficult positions and a lot of them are as a result of mental health issues, uh, loneliness, uh, depression, um, sometimes illness, financial worries, sometimes break up the farm, so a whole lot of things like that and uh, we adopted a scheme of, we, 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 of counsellors uh, I think it was between three and four years ago, and uh, we've got a, a list of if if somebody phones our SABI and says they've got an issue, we'll talk it through with them. But uh, you know, we then say if it's appropriate, we get uh, give them this list of counsellors, and usually there's one in their area, and that's been hugely important of late because we've seen great results from these counsellors. Um, 
And actually, because as you said earlier on, uh, uh, it's quite difficult for people actually to pick up the phone. That's one of the biggest things we find is that first phone call to RSABI. And uh, through that, um, uh, once that happens, it all gets a bit easier. And then uh, the counselling's been a great success. And uh, we've, uh, we've referred a lot of people to counsellors and uh, they have benefited in the main greatly from that. And uh, one or two, some cases, if they haven't got the cash to take up the counselling, you know, we'll, we'll help them with that. But very often, they just need somebody to push them towards a counsellor and, you know, they pay for it themselves. So we found that's been really helpful. And uh, and it's appealing. Like we're going now helping people, you know, you, you mentioned young farmers. And, uh, you know, I still have a connection with young farmers, but in our area up here, we, we, we our farms up at Logie Amund in Persia, and there's a lot of young farmers around here. And of course, they've had no young farmers' activities for, you know, March, or, or not or them being able to see each other, really. And, uh, and we do worry about that. And uh, that's why, you know, the, the, the RSABI work with a number of other organisations and networks. And young farmers is one. And uh, we would be there if somebody really, you know, wanted some help or somebody to speak to us and, and try and put them in the right direction. A lot of our work is that, you know, you get some phone, they've got a situation, um, perhaps it's financial, uh, perhaps they're just, you know, really scattered, the weather's getting them, and uh, they just can't, you know, get the paperwork filled in. So we put them in the direction of people that can help them in, in, in that way. And uh, so, and but getting, so we had to speak, and Narette was very involved in that. She got this uh, speaking campaign uh, 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 going at, at Highland Showtime. That was absolutely fantastic. And Narette, which, what did you win? What, what was the award you, you won again for that? Mm -hmm. um, it was the uh, British Shield of Agricultural Journalists. Yeah, uh, the British, yeah. The other word. Yeah, this is this is a fantastic award, and it was all driven by Narette here, who's, who's listening in, and she's a comms uh, officer for RSABI, and it was to get people to speak. You remember we lost the Highland Show, um, and uh, and you know, were very aware of huge, um, well, lots of implications for losing the Highland Show, but one was that people it was a great place for people to meet and connect with each other. And we lost that, so uh, our that was our uh, uh, effort through Narette, and uh, we were very chuffed uh, uh, that it won this very prestigious award in, in the autumn for, for the, as a campaign. Yeah, and I think, you know, a Highland show is, well, all I'd say is I missed it for various reasons. It was good fun. It's always a good time. Mm -hmm. You meet up with folks you haven't seen for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for a lot of farmers, shows, markets, that sort of thing is is the main social interaction they have, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, I one thing RSABI were pushing around Showtime was uh, the push-up challenge, which I thought yeah. was great fun. Um, uh, I did it, and uh, as a 19 stone man, it was uh, tricky, <laughs> 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 but I did manage to get to 25 at one. <laughs> um, but uh, I thought that was great. You know, folk got yeah. to have a laugh, they got to have a good time, they got to interact online, yeah. that sort of thing. And I think the more of that that can happen, the better. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just a side thing at Highland Showtime I actually wrote a what are we going to do without Highland Show poem and it's sort of what made this page get out there a bit more it got yeah, shared by the Highland yeah. Show and stuff so mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we were all missing it we were all missing it mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that the requirement for for an organisation like RSABI has been a lot higher this year um, just for obvious reasons mm -hmm. has has things changed i mean you're obviously new uh, to it yourself david but i'm sure you've got an idea of the dynamic have things changed from what it was before because of covid covid with rsabi or is it still similar um no i think there's undoubtedly been uh, more call uh rsm covid related um uh, situations it's I, i'm not sure what it's like in your area but in this area during the first um, uh, outbreak of COVID, rural area, the, uh, this area wasn't all that affected in terms of rural um, people actually having the virus. Whereas lately, um, the, you know, there's quite a bit in the country uh, and, and the countryside here in, in, in Persia, and that's a worry um, because. 
when it broke out, so what was in March, we had a, a emergency uh, board meeting about it because we were very concerned that you know farmers, particularly those working themselves, you know, ended up getting COVID and who's going to look after the stock. So there's a human element, but there's also a welfare element for the stock as well as the people. Oh, shit. And we were very worried about that. And uh, fortunately, um, that, that wasn't so much of a factor um, uh, as we'd feared. Um, and I, I suppose our worry at the moment is that uh, with it being in the agricultural community now, the rural community, we may have some of that to handle in, in, in the near future. Um, but uh, we, we were getting calls, yeah, about people were worried um, um, about COVID. Uh, they were on their own more than normal. Um, and uh, so that these were the sort of calls we, we, we were getting, and uh, so we've just. But it's a bit like um, uh, you know, many uh, you know, you you get a d different sort of you know. Every year brings a different situation, uh, Wallace. And uh, you know, two or three years ago, it was terribly wet weather. You know, no straw. Yeah. Real uh, doom and gloom and depression, and uh, we had a lot to handle there. And so every single year, well, you know, as, uh, as someone's involved in farming, there's no two years the same. So the yeah. you get a crop of things you have to handle. And that's been 2020s and sadly now going on to 2021. Yeah. I, th I think that speaks volumes that <clears throat> there's been more calls uh, during COVID when, when I think a lot of people give this, you know, agriculture comes under a bit of fire here and there for being uh, very money driven and animals are sort of a second fiddle when certainly personally I don't see that in the slightest and I think I speak for 99% of farmers that that's not the case but in a year where uh, lamb prices, beef prices, breeding prices have went through the roof compared to previous years mm -hmm. it's still showing that that's not the number one thing that causes farmers to be quote unquote happy um, which is I think <laughs> You're trying to find a good thing out of a bad thing, but um, that's sort of the way I look into that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's all, I think what RSABI do is great and, and it's, I've enjoyed hearing what, what they do, but say, say I was interested in what RSABI did or uh, maybe someone's listened to this podcast and they weren't aware of you and they thought, I, I kind of want to support. How, how, how could someone go about doing that? Well, that's great because, I mean, what I found, you know, people say, well, it's, you know, to me, to start with, what, 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 what you, you know, what, what's your role in this RSABI thing? You know, what do they, what do they do? And it's one of these organisations uh, that, and, 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 you know, that folk kind of thought they knew what we did, but they didn't really. And uh, so Noretz uh, and, and the team have been doing a great job in actually getting out to the public, you know, what we're doing. In some charities, you, you can actually give case studies and name the people and all the rest of it. But because our service and it is very confidential, you know, even the board don't know um, um, who is actually being helped. Yes. So, and the only time they so we have got a structure of um, uh, if a case comes forward, then there's parameters which the, the welfare officers, uh, you know, can make a decision as to whether we can, whether it helps appropriate what to do and so, so forth. So we have, we have the, um, so the, these parameters are, 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 are sorted by the welfare team. Well, they're, they're fixed by the board and then the welfare team uh, assess whether someone should be getting help and if so, what sort of help. So that's, um, that's really, you know, important going, going forward. But uh, they, then sometimes, uh, if cases are out with the parameters, then these cases come to the board. But even at that level, the board do not know who's helping because we, we see confidentiality as key um, uh, and, and fundamental to, to what we're doing. Because if, if it's not that way, then people might be reluctant to come, to come forward. So that's the, you know, that's the, the, the practical side of it. And uh, the, the, the side you asked about support, well, we get, support in all sorts of ways. Individuals can be members of our SABI, but what we're really pr promoting uh, just now is a supporter scheme. And that is where a farm business will come in and on an annual basis give money every year, um, uh, or if it's a corporate company, give money, sign up as a corporate member. And 
what you know that's some you know we're focused we're doing something similar to other charities to try and get regular income because you know one of our big we lost the great glen challenge uh, last year which is a huge fund money er earner for rsabi and it was lost so that money was all i uh, didn't see it so um the supporter scheme is taking is certainly gaining traction and there's a lot of people coming in which you know and that is the way really to, to you know to support so if there's anyone out there that's not already a member or a, a farm business supporter or a corporate supporter would i'd really urge them to you know, come on board and then you're part of this uh, team you get all the feedback about what we're doing and uh you know we've had i mean you know, it, it, it's humbling to be involved in certain in, in senses. One sense where you see the good work our welfare team are doing and helping people, but the other is the amazing things that, that people do for us. Um, some of it's like you doing the press ups, uh, some it's uh, you know, uh, some is you know running up and down mountains, uh, swimming, uh, all sorts of challenges. Um, uh, which uh, people, you know, to, to, you know, to raise money, and then some people, you know, just you know, give us very generous checks um, uh, and donations, which it, you know is always welcome. But we're really keen to get this supporter scheme going, so as that we can get this network of people, you know, more involved, and uh, the more they see what we're doing, the more we can help in a, a fundraising uh, sense. But more importantly. If they know exactly what the organisation's about, they can see, maybe recognise people in the country that could do with help from RSABI. And that's really important. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. We're helping about a thousand families. You know, it depends, it depends uh, year in, year out, uh, but it's about 900 to a thousand families a year. And, uh, and we know fine, there's more people out there that uh, could do with help. And so, you know, if there's any of your listeners or watchers, um, say someone that sees someone that could do with help, a you know, word from them to that person, say, look, you know, please phone um, RSABI or have you thought about phoning them? Uh, you know, that first introduction is, the, you know, the, can be the tricky bit, but we're lucky. We've got, you know, the vets, you know, the auctioneers, Scottish government, um, agricultural officers. We've, we've got a whole um, team of people, um, SEC and another great, we get a lot of support from, from, from them. And sometimes they, you know, can just see maybe someone in the countryside who, on a farm, could do with a bit of help. And uh, that push from them can be just enough to get the phone call in and then yeah. we can take things from there. Well, I think that's that's quite amazing. You're saying 900 to 1,000, and this number is bouncing about in my head. Am I right in saying that there's about, is it nine or 11,000 uh, NFU-affiliated farms in Scotland? Now, there's obviously going to be more than that. I'm sure mm. that's the number. So, you know, you're looking at 11-ish percent. It's a lot of folk and a lot of families you're helping there. So I think that's excellent. But I, those numbers might be, I might be wrong, but I'm quite certain that's, that's about right. I think I think they, there's about um, there's quite a bit more actually because we also crofting's one of the uh, help so we, we help with uh, crofting uh, community. In fact, one of our most recently appointed um, uh, trustees is a joint chair of the Crofters Commission, and okay. she's based up in Ullapool. So it, she's uh, so that's the crofting you know comes into. So it's basically for agriculture. Uh, growing and uh, crofting, so yeah. uh, they're, they're the areas that we help. Yeah. But I mean, I've, I've only really, i was just thinking there, I've only really got one more question uh, about RSABI there, David. But one thing that I kind of almost want to reiterate is the the importance of the fact that of uh, the confidentiality the RSABI mm -hmm. show. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you know, I'm I'm 24 and I've maybe been in this industry directly about six years. And I'm sure it wouldn't take long for someone in Aberdeen to have heard of me or whatever. And there's that sort of fear that in this small industry that I really want to talk to someone, but what if they know such and such? So it, I just kind of wanted to reiterate them. I think that's brilliant how confidential it is. So uh, if, if you are out there and you want to talk to someone or you know someone who does, I think that would be an excellent uh, choice. I mean, to make. yeah, that's, yeah, I, just, I said it, you know, it's obviously 
you've really picked up Wallace the, the, the importance of, of, of that because it's you know it's um, the uh, people obviously would be nervous of it coming forward and, uh, and we don't want that that would actually be a barrier to what our organization you know, is about you know. how you, you mentioned welfare officers as obviously yourself and Norette, who I've came in contact with directly, right. how many folk um, are employed or work for? Well, we've, got you know? a, we've got, um, the, the, the structure is our chief, uh, we've got Nina Clancy, who's, she's our chief executive, and she's um, um, based in Edinburgh. And then we've got, uh, uh, well, we're, not a, we're not a huge organisation, about 10 uh, full time, and then okay. one or two part time. And um, and so that you've got obviously finance director and um, and then we've got um, the welfare team, the admin team. So a number of small teams, but they work very well together. And it's really interesting. I'd never could have come across you before. And here I'm meeting you on Zoom, <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, all our board meetings are being done on Zoom, and it's. Incredible because you know one of our directors, as I said earlier, is from Ullapool. It takes her two days to come to Edinburgh, and uh, it's amazing how um, this whole pandemic has sort of moved things on rather quickly. And uh, but the other thing is, of course, our staff meetings—they are all you know, done done in Zoom, and uh, that's a big thing. So we're a very good team. So it's not the biggest team, but they're a very hardy team. They're very resourceful, very resilient. And then they have to, uh, you know, handle uh, some uh, in the welfare area some some quite difficult situations, and they're, they're great at that. And a very compassionate um, team, so no, a, a very good, um, uh, got a lot of professionalism there and discretion, you know, which it has to be, and of course, uh, good judgment because that's part of it. And the other thing is, we, you know, we are a charity, and uh, the, the the money is that, that we're spending is gift is given by. Con uh, contributors um, and uh, so benefactors, whether it's donations, whether it's subscriptions. So, and uh, we're all, of course, Oscar registered. So it means that we're um, having to comply with all the charity regulations, as, as you would expect. Yeah, no, great, great. Um, it's quite funny you mentioned that you never uh, came across me, you'd never meeting on Zoom, and there's been this whole idea of social distancing, which I've always kind of disagreed with. I've seen it more as a a physical distancing, which has somehow inadvertently led to like a, a, a social closening almost. You know, I've yeah. came to know a lot of people, especially with this rural to kitchen, that have met YouTubers and people in different jobs throughout the industry that they would, it would just never happen without this type of thing. So yeah, yeah no, there's, there's definitely been bad, but there's also been there's been uh, there's been silver linings there. Um, that's been brilliant. Though. Very interesting to chat, but uh, don't don't think you're getting away without the two questions I ask everyone. Um, those are uh, those are the, my followers that I've followed since I started the people in farming days. Where, if if you don't know what that is, David, basically what I did was I messaged people like I did yourself, and instead of doing this, um, I spoke to them, sent them a few questions, and I wrote it down. Now I got kicked out of English, and you could tell in these <laughs> in these posts for a reason. I'm better at the the, the, the talking than I am. At, at writing so um, I always ask at the end two things one where you see yourself in five years and two if you had any tips for coming into the industry that that were in agriculture what what would they be well <clears throat> well if you have worked out that uh, I'm obviously quite a bit older than you so uh, I'm, <laughs> I wasn't sure but you've, you've told so, me now <laughs> So, um, so in, in um, five, five, five years, um, yeah, where will I be? Well, anyway, um, I hope that um, uh, I, I, I hope, hope done because I have a three-year spell with RSABI, and um, I hope that uh, um, that that goes well. And I also hope to keep up with the organisation after I come out. Uh, and my farm well we've got we started three years ago and we've got a few short horns and i'd like to build them you know up a bit um and uh, so i'm quite you know excited uh, about that and we've got one or two developments having uh, to do and there's quite a lot of some improvements or changes in the farm uh so we're going to be working at that and uh, with the time scale the past looking at the time scale of the last three years I would think five years is a fairly realistic time uh, for, 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 for getting quite a few things sorted in the farm. So yeah, that's um, 
in that sense, I see um, that. And I mean, we, we, I'm, we, I'm obviously still busy with United Auctions, um, uh, although I'm, I'm not at so many sales because of the, the, the regulations, um, but I'm still uh, very much uh, interested and keen on yes. that. And um, I, I, I suppose, um, I, I just, well, I hope you know, that we're all blessed with health and we get through this pandemic. Um, uh, because you know, it's as important, and you know, I just emphasize that. But I think some of my farming friends think that sort of um, it won't come to their doorstep. And I think you know, from a, a medium like yours, um, Wallace, it's always worth pointing out to keep um, be careful. I mean, I yes. know one, uh, several farms within 20 miles of here where there's two or three people have tested positive. And uh, so I think um, that's uh, important. So if we keep the important thing is we'll keep it healthy. I uh, suppose so we're there in five years. That's, that's uh, true, a, true. Key, a key thing. And, uh, but no, I just like to work away. And then, you know, I don't know quite that um, after that. What I do find um, is that, uh, you know, you said you're 24 stone. Well, I'm about half of no, that. No, 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 tw 20, 24 years old, 19 stone. All right. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually a lot less than that now, about 17. Oh, no, 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 we don't I, need to I, get into that. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> but, but you're still about twice. I, 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 I don't know what weight I am. I'm about 12 stone. But all I know is that these cheviot treat we've got uh, from Leag are extremely lively. And uh, and uh, so catching them uh, at lambing is quite, uh, quite a quite a challenge sometimes. So I think uh, it, realistically in five years time, I'm not so sure that I'll be chasing our sheep. I think hopefully <laughs> I have someone else chasing them for me. If they, uh, they may of course settle down. Uh, I, 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 funny enough, I'm a bit happy with the cattle where I can sort of move them around myself. Um, so that's it, that's it. But I hope that's just a sort of woolly answer. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so that's all. And then where, um, so coming in the industry, well, you know, it's nice to meet you and, and your, uh, your and your role in this role, the broadcasting role, but also in the, the education. And I am nothing other than um, impressed by uh, a lot of the youngsters uh, that I see coming in to the market and who are involved in the commercial side of it, pedigree side. Um, there is a lot of terrific uh, talent there. And uh, so I think that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'd certainly encourage them. I think I think there's a strong future. Um, uh, I suppose the one thing we um, I do worry about is the lack of space for youngsters in terms of getting land. Um, but, you know, governments and unions and are, are, are looking at that. And I hope that there is more land available because that's key. And then um, and viability has got to be, you know, key as well. So to get into something, and I mean, there's some areas uh, which um, I suppose are, you have an easier entry than others to start with. And uh, the, the key is to get in, get get in there. And I, I see a lot of uh, young youngsters in this area doing contracting work, so yeah. they're either on a farm permanently or a mixture. There's a lot of that, and. Uh, a lot of very hard working, very enterprising people. It's mainly stock people I see. So I'm confident there's a future there. Uh, that, the future, of course, ties in with the commercial elements of, of, of farming. But uh, we've got um, in the United Auctions, it's lamb and beef that we've been involved in mainly. And, uh, uh, and it's a fantastic product, you know. So it's you know it's just an incredible product which is in demand both in the UK and uh, there's obviously issues at the moment. Um, uh, the one thing we feel for is our people in the north, particularly the fishermen and shell fisher in particular, mm -hmm. and some of them are crofters as well. So they come in under our remit, and one feels very bad for them at the moment. And we hope that um, they. Glitches, as they're described, have certainly looked like major glitches to me. Uh, uh, you know, get resolved, and that yeah. uh, that premium market um, it comes back to them for that amazing product. So, yeah, we've got a great product, 
Uh, we need to get out and sell it, of course. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's an ongoing business. Uh, but uh, I've certainly, I certainly, I take um, great faith in the youngsters. And actually, we've, we've had with more youngsters coming in, showing an interest in RSCBI as well, which we see as essential. And uh, one of the things we're looking at is bringing on young, almost like trainee board members. Um, uh, it's a, you know, we're, we're just coming, finalizing sort of that sort of thing at the moment. So maybe a couple of people a year uh, uh, sort of shadow the board and come in and see what we're about. And uh, so we'll be, we're looking to develop that, but we're not quite there, but that's something because we see you know, our, our offering RSABI coming to a younger age group compared to what it used to be. Yeah, great, uh, good stuff, good tips for anyone. The sort of main main uh, tip coming through there, I would say, was work hard and uh, aim for what you, you know, aim high, work hard, and uh, you'll get there with sort of what I was picking up, so good stuff. Um, apart from that, uh, David, I think we've done, what is that? About three quarters of an hour, I think, something like that. It's been good, and um, I've certainly enjoyed it. I hope you have. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, thank you very much. It's really good to meet you, and uh, and good luck with all you're doing, and I hope you get back to the uh, I hope you get your jab and uh, you get back down to the bar the barony with, uh, and, and uh, unmasked and all the rest of it and get on yeah. with, with, with the good work and keep up there. And thanks for thanks for speaking about RSABI. It's just fantastic and we really do appreciate that. So if anyone's interested, you, 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 there's a good website there. Just beam into the website for, for anything, whether it's help or other people want to be supporters would be delighted to have you up on board it's quite true when you say there it would be nice to get back onto the campus without masks because i only started in august so it's something i've never done uh, yeah, so yeah. that'll be very nice uh, yeah. so yeah thank you for coming on and um, thank you to narrate for uh, for uh, helping us through it there as well and uh, we will see you in another two weeks for our two cast number three